Good morning, everybody. I can't begin to tell you how nice it is for me coming back from Toronto a couple of days ago to be standing here at a ballpark in a beautiful sunny morning <laughs> after being in snow and rain and sleet and ice. My name is Glenn Williamson. I'm going to be your MC for this morning. And I have the great tasks of keeping us on schedule, making sure the proper people are introduced, and that you get all the information that you require at this, uh, at this phenomenal event that the city of Peoria has put on. So what I would like to do is, is begin by welcoming everybody to Peoria's Investment Forum. A Little bit of housekeeping as we're going through this. The bathrooms are straight in the back. Exits are to your left and to your right where you came in and where you will go out for lunch. This opens up onto the veranda for the ballpark and uh, that will be important should anything be needed in the way of emergency exits. We're going to be going through a lot of material this morning. The City of Peoria staff have done a spectacular job in preparing it in concise and uh, in bite-sized chunks and I think you'll, you'll enjoy hearing what, uh, what you're going to see and, and be presented with. I do ask that you put your cell phones on vibrate so we don't have cell phones going off during the presentation. These people have put a lot of effort into getting this done correctly and it would be a distraction for them to do that. If anybody does need to excuse themselves, just quietly maneuver your way to the back and we won't move uh, anything here in the front of the presentation. The room you're in is brand spanking new. It's only been here for a little while, I have to tell you. It is one of the coolest rooms I've seen in the Greater Valley. Uh, with this much technology, with this much of a view, and the amount of people you can put in here, I am very impressed with uh, what the City of Peoria has done with this. And this room is available should you or your organizations have an interest in renting it out or doing events here. The City of Peoria staff are here and uh, you're more than welcome to chat with them about that. And now what I would like to do is introduce uh, the mayor and I will read a little biography on the mayor and, uh, and chat uh, a little bit about that. I'd also like to introduce uh, the vice mayor is here and uh, Bridget is right beside us and Carlo Leone is here somewhere. There he is all the way in the back. Good to see you, sir. And uh, John Edwards is here sitting up in front, councilman. And then uh, Bill, you're right here as well. Bill Padron is also council member. So we've got the council members here and Mayor Carlot. So let me, let me tell you about Kathy, as I like to call her, because this is one of the most amazing mayors in the greater Phoenix area. Uh, she's Peoria's very first female mayor. She was elected mayor in November of 2014 and has served on the Peoria City Council for the last decade. Mayor Carlot is dedicated to improving quality of life in Peoria residents, fiscal responsibility, and transparency with taxpayer dollars, protecting open space and economic development, which is what today is very much about. Mayor Carlot is a no-nonsense mayor, and I can attest to that. I've been around her when she's feisty, and uh, she is very much a no-nonsense mayor. She manages with an eye on smart planning for the future and expects results with accountability, and Mayor Carlot concentrates full-time on making Peoria an even better place to live. With that, Mayor, the podium is yours. Thank you, Glenn, and thank you for that shameless plug for our beautiful new room. We appreciate that. Move some stuff around here. So, wow, what a great crowd today. This is fabulous. So I want to thank you all for being here today. I am so proud to be able to share with you the city that I love so much. Um, and I know that, that you have done all of your research, you've done your work, your data research, your, you, know, you know our demographics, you know all the great things about our city. But I want to tell you a little bit about how we view our city. Um, there's something very special going on in the city of Peoria right now. This is an extraordinary time in the history of our city. We are financially sound. We have a city council who stands firmly unified behind our singular vision. And 
we enjoy an extraordinary quality of life in the city of Peoria. It is a tremendous time. So we are very smart. We are seizing this opportunity, this time in our history to change the course of who we are going to be, change the course of the future for our generations still to come in the city of Peoria. So while we enjoy our quality of life and while this is a great place to live, the mayor and the council are focused on our mission, a singular mission, and that mission is economic development. It is our number one goal. All of our strategic and budgetary objectives, including arts and culture and all the things that make up our quality of life, they all tie back to economic development for the mayor, the council, the council and all of the city leadership in the city of Peoria. This is our time and we are going to make good on this opportunity right now. As a matter of fact, economic development is the reason that I ran for this office more than a decade ago, a, little, a lot longer than a decade ago actually. <laughs> it's the reason that I ran for mayor and it's the reason that I left private sector employment to stay here full time and focus on development and investment in the city of Peoria. And the rest of the council is, is on board also. The idea of partnering with investors might not be popular in all the cities that you go to. Uh, but in the city of Peoria, we have the commitment and the guts to move forward with those partnerships. We will do what it takes to enable smart, innovative, public-private partnerships that help our businesses succeed and help Peoria to reach its goals for its future generations. That's what we're doing right now. We are making a city that is going to be productive, economically feasible and sound for our future generations. That's our job and that's our vision and that's what we will do. So I, I know that you guys have a lot of things to do today. I know that um, you're ready to get your projects moving and we wanna help you do that. But the one thing that I want you to take away from this whole event today is that the city leadership in the city of Peoria is firmly committed to our economic development mission and purpose and ultimate success. We are behind you 100% of the way. So I hope you enjoy our city, enjoy the ball game, enjoy this lovely room today, and welcome to the city of Peoria. Thank you very much, Mayor Carlette. As a French Canadian, I pronounced your last name, and I apologize profusely for that. C'est maintenant je cap en français. Thank you so much. It's much far appreciated, far. I know. <laughs> So a little bit more uh, housekeeping and things that we want to thank. Um, the Seattle Mariners and the San Diego Padres for their hospitality and allowing us to uh, use this brand new colonnade room is very important. Uh, Chris Calcaterra is somewhere in the back, right over there. Chris is uh, responsible for the Peoria Sports Complex. Chris, thank you very much for allowing this to occur and for your all this heavy lifting and getting everything where we need it to be. The sponsorship, none of these events happen uh, without having great sponsors. And I think it's really important for everybody to also grasp that you're watching a three camera shoot. There's two cameras here and a third camera here. So everybody is online. This is streaming live out on the net uh, to registered people that are watching this. And this also will all be recorded so people online will be able to watch this, which means that this is not just a domestic regional meeting. This is truly a global meeting where this information and these presentations are going live to anybody around the world that has an interest in Peoria, Arizona. So I think that is something important to understand. And the Twitter hashtag for that is hashtag invest Peoria, Arizona. Any of those people tweeting, we would love for you to make that active and help the social media side of what's going on. Now I'd like to point out our main sponsors, Alliance Bank. Mike Thiel is here. Mike, 
right over here. Mike, thank you very much with Alliance Bank. Uh, Cox Communication, Michael Banker is right there. Mike, thank you very much. And then Arizona Public Service, David Bentler. David, thank you for all your support. We also have Kelly Patton, I believe, is with you somewhere from APS. Kelly's all the way in the back. Thanks, Kelly, for being here. Uh, Chicanos por la Causa is also uh, a sponsor of this, and we're very thankful for that. Diamond Ventures, David Goldstein, I believe, is David, thank you, much appreciated. LGE Design, Sven Anderson and David Sellers. I'm not sure where you are, you're in the back at the table. Thank you very much. And Salt River, I saw you, but I don't know where you are. There you are right there. Thank you for Salt River Project being here. And we have affiliate uh, sponsors, the Arizona Builders Exchange, Rebecca Morris. Thank you, Rebecca, much appreciated. So without the sponsors, it's not just about financially being involved, it's about sponsors being emotionally and built into the DNA of what is trying to be done here. So thank you very, very much for all your support. With that, I'm now gonna turn uh, this over to Chris Petroff from GPEC to give us a idea of some of the positioning of this region. Thank you, Glenn, and uh, thanks for having us here today. Uh, again, my name is Chris Petroff with the Greater Phoenix Economic Council. Uh, we've been a longtime partner of the city of Peoria and have been fortunate enough to work alongside their mayor, council, uh, and economic development staff for several years uh, in pursuing opportunities uh, for the region and, and for Peoria. So kind of to set the stage, I really want to talk about what we're seeing here in the region as far as attraction and, and, and what type of companies are looking at the region uh, but more specifically, how Peoria has the opportunity right now to, as Mailer Carlat uh, referred to, as changing the course for this community. Uh, this really is a prime opportunity uh, to change the course for Peoria. Um, I've, I've lived in Peoria for six years. Uh, I, was a, I was a resident here for six years and actually worked in Peoria um, and, and, and have a deep passion for this community. Um, and seeing a, a, a city come to the table with their partners in development, in construction, in design, architecture, engineers, um, and investment um, to showcase, and I'm, I'm looking back at the, at the boards that are up, different parcels that, uh, that have prime opportunity and prime potential to change this community is truly an amazing thing. So um, uh, to the mayor and council, I commend you for, uh, for establishing this. Um, so Greater Phoenix has, has become the market where companies go to scale. From startups to Fortune companies, uh, we are looked at as the market that can help them elevate their presence and go to the market faster um, than, than other markets in our region. Um, some of the factors that we deal with when working with these companies and, and some of the information that we help them with um, is really understanding the business environment. Um, we have partners that are here today from the Arizona Commerce Authority uh, that we work alongside with that really help, um, help our, our, our companies and our clients understand the operating environment from taxes to incentives uh, to workforce. Uh, so really having an environment where companies can come and scale quickly with limited red tape at the state leadership level is imperative uh, to our success. Um, recently, one of the most um, critical factors for our region and why we've seen a lot of companies uh, expand here has been because of the workforce. Uh, when you look at the workforce in markets in our region, uh, Greater Phoenix and specifically Peoria has a very diverse, young, talented and educated workforce. Um, and when you start looking at what sectors they operate in, uh, they operate in multiple industries uh, across various sectors nationally. So we're able to look at companies uh, that are servicing broad markets, uh, and in turn, it, uh, it elevates um, our region to attract uh, more diversified companies here. One thing we've heard time and time again is that our market has a very strong culture of entrepreneurship bred into it. Uh, we've become a market where we don't see hurdles. We see uh, an, an opportunity to make things easier. Uh, we don't see challenges, we see an opportunity uh, to pave the way for future companies. Um, that mentality, that culture, uh, that stems in both the private and public sector, 
is something that leaders from across the country are drawn to. Um, that leaders, when they want to put a, a, a building or a project in our region, um, see that the cities can get them through uh, planning, permitting, entitlements, everything uh, quicker than other markets in the U.S. We've had clients that are looking at putting projects in California that can't get their project through entitlements in less than 24 to 36 months. But when you start looking at the communities here in, in, our, in, our, in our market, that becomes a major competitive advantage when we're competing uh, for large manufacturing operations um, or even large uh, corporate office operations. Um, so real quickly to touch on current activities and trends, we're seeing significant, um, we're seeing significant activity um, in, in various office products. We're seeing the large institutionals come to the market with large back office operations. Um, as well as your technology companies coming out of the Bay Area uh, that are bringing uh, very high wage customer success, sales and marketing operations to the Valley. Uh, those are the two trends really when looking at the office product uh, that we are primed and positioned well uh, to serve here in this market. Um, Peoria is primed to serve that well uh, as you start looking at the opportunities that are available for Class A office space here and you start looking at the demographics that are in this community or that are within even a 20 minute drive time, that demographic um, is, 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 is within reason for a company to put their project here in the city of Peoria. When looking at industrial assets, uh, this is another um, uh, op opportunity that we've seen significant growth in, both on light manufacturing uh, as well as within e-commerce. So just gonna talk about two um, two, two quick sub-segments. Light manufacturing, we're seeing significant growth in companies coming out of California that are doing either light assembly or light manufacturing, um, as well as companies coming from the East Coast that need a West Coast presence. Uh, these facilities tend to be under 50,000 square feet. Typically, they have high-wage jobs, and their servicing sectors uh, that our workforce here competes well in. Uh, so these are two trends now in the industrial sector that we're seeing. Lastly, really quickly on why Peoria and, 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 and really why it's become the gem in the West Valley uh, for, uh, for businesses, you know, is, uh, and I know you're going to hear from Scott here shortly, so I don't want to go too much into it, uh, but when we're working with companies, it really comes down to the workforce. It comes down to the geographic positioning of this community. With both access to the 101 and the 303, the infrastructure is prime for future growth. Um, so we're very fortunate to be partners with the city of Peoria. Um, if any of you do have questions uh, afterwards, um, myself, uh, the economic development staff with the city, as well as our partners from the Arizona Commerce Authority, will be more than happy to, to speak about economic development with you. So with that, thank you. And I will turn the mic back over to Scott. Just got the, the audible from Glenn. So thank you. <laughs> And I believe I'm on. Yes, perfect. Thank you for joining us today. Um, for those of you with us today and uh, those of us virtually, uh, thanks for taking your time to learn more about the city of Peoria. Invest Peoria Smart. Well, what does that mean? You know, you see a lot of logos, you see a lot of taglines. What's so smart about investing in Peoria? Um, what you're going to hear today throughout my presentation is a theme that touches on a couple points. One is, when you look at the value proposition, and that's really what we're talking about here today, is what's the value proposition for the city of Peoria? It's based on data, it's based on research, it's based on technical studies, and it's based on evaluation. Okay, so when we go through our investment portfolio in this Peoria's first IPO, initial public offering of investment opportunities and real estate development, whether commercial office, or industrial, for commercializing medical device companies, or in business location investment. It's rooted in that data, information, and research. Another thing that our program is based on is the partner that you would be partnering with. So whether you're investing personally or professionally, who you partner with is very important. You know, is this the partner that's gonna be with you through good times and bad? Everybody's in a great partnership when everything's going well, but the true test of a good partnership is when 
sometimes you hit the reef. And how do we work together, as the mayor mentioned, working side by side to make our opportunities progress and come to fruition? And as you heard from the mayor, this, the mayor and the city council, singularly focused on economic development. So in this partnership, you're getting focus, you're getting dedicated revenue, and the ability to invest along with you, as opposed to come build it and we'll let you pay for everything. What you're getting from the city of Peoria is equal investment for equal value. And the, and the third thing is, what's the value proposition then? When you consider, okay, so we're gonna make investments based on data research and evaluation, not anecdotal thoughts or taglines. Um, and what is the strength of the partnership when we enter into an agreement? And how can we financially assist and make your process uh, for entitlements easier? A lot of communities talk about being fast and nimble in the entitlement and permitting and plan review process. How is Peoria different? And we're gonna talk about that today. Just like in California, it might take 24 or 36 months. That's not the case in Peoria. You become front of the line. And we're gonna talk about that. These are the things that equal a, pr a value proposition. Why you should think about investing your time, energy, and resources in the city of Peoria. That's what investing Peoria Smart is all about. What is this? Everybody should have on their seats a hard copy of this document because I realize from the monitors that's hard to read. When we started this effort towards today, we knew that we needed to have a one-stop shop website dedicated to investment. And so what you see here is a logic diagram of how our Invest Peoria AZ Smart website, which is a brand new website, is constructed, and the sources of information that are contained within it. So I wanted to just spend a quick moment going over it because all of the technical studies, market studies, uh, market research, due diligence packages, and everything that I'm gonna reference today are housed on this website that you can view at any time, uh, print at any time. Uh, again, being a platform for one-stop investment shopping in the city of Peoria. So what I wanted to do is start perhaps with the uh, left side of the page under resources. Because what's really important is to understand that the economic development program for the city of Peoria is not the flavor of the month. We have a very thorough and strategic economic development plan. It's called our economic development implementation strategy. Uh, and, and, and the mayor alluded to it. And this is the roadmap for the city of Peoria when it comes to economic development that has uh, been unanimously supported by the city council. Um, so when you see what it is we're trying to accomplish, it is, everything ties back to that strategy. And so it is a strategy that builds over time. It's not one that changes every year. It's how do we get from point A to point B over multiple years and cure the deficits, amplify the, the, the assets, and make this the best investment opportunity for the objectives that we're seeking. And so I invite you at your leisure to look at our economic development implementation strategy because today, and everything that we're talking about in terms of real estate development opportunities specifically, but all investment opportunities, is rooted in this document. That's why we're doing this event today. That's why we have the properties available today. And that's why we did all the research and analysis for these opportunities today. And that is for one singular reason. That is to increase the portfolio of space and type of space opportunities in the city of Peoria to attract the very industries that, that the city council has stated it wants to attract in the city of Peoria. So the EDIS uh, is a very policy document. And so that's available uh, for you to look at as to, again, what is the partnership that I'm getting into and what is their vision and what is their commitment to sticking with the vision? Certainty is important in investing. Another document that is important is our economic development um, incentive and investment policy. We invest in projects with you, okay? So it's important for you to see the policy parameters in which we invest our resources. And so this is a document that's available. It's a companion 
to the EDIS, the Economic Development Implementation Strategy, that outlines general parameters as to what do we look for in terms of projects that we want to invest in with you as partners. What we also have here is the normal and the customary. Workforce demographics, updated demographics, uh, all uh, refreshed and updated uh, with our new uh, EDIS document. So you can go into all the level of detail as to what the city of Peoria has, uh, also within its 30 and 45 minute commute sheds, uh, the whole data profile, uh, workforce composition, and uh, the assets that we have to make businesses uh, thrive in the city of Peoria. We also have two signature programs. We have the Old Town uh, Commercial Revitalization Program, where we will invest up to 50% in businesses that need help in locating in Old Town Peoria. A companion program to that is our P83, the district in which we are in, uh, building reuse program, where we will invest up to 50% uh, to offset extraordinary tenant improvement costs associated with transitioning former restaurant buildings into office, entertainment, and retail operations. And we have two, you might have noticed the construction trailers coming in. We have two uh, businesses going in uh, right now. One is a, a, a virtual uh, uh, simulated uh, entertainment user, and the other is Huntington University coming into the P83 district through that program. Again, we investing Parapasu with you. Also, as in preparation for today, we wanted to do some technical studies as to what is the lay of the land as it comes to commercial office development. Uh, we very much need new commercial office development as inventories are low. Um, so we uh, engaged Elliot Pollock to do a market evaluation uh, for commercial office. Uh, and that's one of the market studies that's available for you to look at that I'll be referencing in my remarks today. Uh, again, it's about technical studies, data, research, and analysis. We also did a cost of doing business study. You, know, you, you go to a lot of these events and you hear cities say, well, we have the lowest cost of doing business. Really? Where? Show me. Well, we did one. We, we engaged a consultant to do a cost of doing business study for us that compared us to seven uh, Western regional metro areas, San Diego, LA, Bay Area, Bay Area Salt Lake City, uh, Denver, Austin, and Dallas. So we wanted to know the data, the facts behind how does Peoria stack up when it comes to the cost of doing business uh, as part of analyzing, do we really have what it takes to be competitive? And the good news is, yeah, we do. And we're gonna be talking about that today. You also hear a lot of cities say, we're the fastest plan review and the fastest permit in the Valley, right? Who does not say that? Well, our city council just adopted a policy that for eligible projects, you get front of the line Plan review, that's building, that's fire. Plan review, permitting, and inspection, no cost to you. Zero cost, front of the line. No waiting in queues behind the patio enclosure permit for, for the, the projects that are moving the needle for us in terms of economic development, uh, front of the line, and no cost to you. Plan review, permitting, inspection. That's proving that you're the fastest plan review and permit in the West. That's, we understand what it takes to get deals done. We understand that's important. And so thank you to the city council for adopting that policy. So that's under resources. Now, so I really encourage you at your leisure, take a look at that. That'll give you a better sense of, okay, what kind of a partner are we getting uh, uh, here in the city of Peoria? But we also have investments and it's not just real estate. Later on, we're gonna be focusing on real estate, but we have more than that. You may not have known that the city of Peoria has the oldest medical device incubator in the valley, BioInspire. That was a partnership between the plaza companies and BioSL to grow medical device companies in Peoria. And so right now we have a facility in, in the Plaza del Rio campus uh, that it currently has nine existing portfolio companies that are commercializing. These are medical device companies. Okay, so what kind of a partner are you getting when you come to the city of Peoria? We, the city of Peoria, are leasing the space. We, the city of Peoria, paid for the improvements to the space to make the labs, to make the collaboration rooms, to make the office space. We, the city of Peoria, are providing seed funding to these companies 
to commercialize their medical device through proof of concept, through FDA approvals, through uh, uh, the whole host of commercialization steps, okay? So when you partner with the city of Peoria, you not only get someone that's gonna be there with you for the long haul, but we invest with you. And so we have commercializing companies, some that have had come into our program with a zero value and exited at a 10X. Now I can't, I can't say that that's gonna be the performance for all of them, but there are opportunities if you're interested to invest in these companies because we de-risk them through our program with BioSL to the point where we've eliminated the, uh, the, the commercialization risks. So we have a whole section in our website devoted to that. So what you see on there is a, is a video from BioInspire and the CEO of BioSL, our partner in that program, and a whole list of all our portfolio companies and their websites uh, and a bunch of information that if uh, you're interested, uh, we'd welcome your, your angel investment in, in our per, uh, commercializing portfolio companies. Another investment opportunity we have is in business location. That's what this is all about. We need to attract the businesses that are gonna sign leases to fill the commercial office space that we want to grow our innovation uh, economy here. Our innovation economy has started and that started through the attraction of Trine University, the attraction of Huntington University, the attraction of Maxwell uh, Technologies, expansion out of San Diego, with Aviage Systems, which is a joint venture between General Electric and the aviation industries of China. Uh, through BioInspire, we've started, we wanna take that to the next level. And that's one of the projects we're gonna talk about today in the very parking lot that you parked is the development of true class A office space for an innovation and technology uh, campus. That's a vision we have for this area to attract those types of companies, to provide that type of inventory for those companies to come here uh, and, and, and provide high paying uh, jobs. So in our business location, we have multiple building, uh, existing buildings that are available. So we have site sheets for each one of those. Uh, workforce analysis, very important. Uh, so we have it broken down in a whole number of ways for you to take a look at. Uh, priority track development review. I mentioned it front of the line. Everybody wants to know how fast can I get my tenant improvements done? Well, guess what? Pretty darn fast. Your front of the line didn't cost you a dime. Um, also, the cost of doing business studies there. So if you want to say, okay, Scott, yeah, I don't believe that, well, go look at the study. Everything you're going to hear me say today came straight out of the study, a third party technical study. Uh, and our innovation in Peoria brochure. What's, the, what's Peoria's story when it comes to innovation and technology? What is it that you really have and what is it that you're trying to accomplish? All that information is there under business location uh, investment opportunity. So now as we transition into real estate development, we really have four buckets of information for you. Um, one are true redevelopment projects. In Old Town, we have a number of properties that we would love to enter into uh, uh, partnerships and ag development agreements with to, to redevelop existing uh, properties that are in need of, of new purposing. So we have true redevelopment uh, development project opportunities for those niche developers that are a more infill redevelopment type of a space. Under additional properties, uh, these are all privately owned properties that are currently available uh, for commercial or industrial development. There's 22 on our site. Each one has a site sheet with all the relevant information. Um, very similar to some of the site sheets that you see on the poster boards in the back. So that's our inventory of existing available. And then we have a category called city partnerships. What does that mean? That means that these are properties where we, the city, have entered into an agreement a, or are in partnership with uh, for the development of the parcels. So that includes uh, the Vistantia Commercial Corps uh, up in northern Peoria, uh, where we have a development agreement with Stratford Land, the property owner. That includes the 17 acre uh, parcel uh, off the 101 uh, near Park West, where we have a, uh, an agreement and a relationship with the Howard Hughes Corporation. Um, and that also includes uh, an approximately 130 acre uh, industrial park potential uh, property uh, through a relationship we have with the property owner, the, the Rovi families. So these are uh, properties that are very important properties for development. 
uh, that we have relationships with, we have agreements with, and therefore there are partnership properties. And then we have those that are truly city owned, of which there are two. One is the 17 acre uh, parking lot that you parked in this morning, and what is the potential and vision for transforming that into the next catalytic project for innovation and technology in the P83 district. Uh, and a 14 acre parcel that the city purchased not long ago, right off the 101 and Peoria Avenue. So what I want to do for purposes of this slide is give you an orientation to the logic, the information, and the organization of this website. This website, um, you know, please take a look at it. It has a lot of information, um, and you'll better understand what our approach to economic development is. And uh, also, it'll give you video testimonials from those companies that have agreements with us, so you can hear from them as to what it's like doing business with the city of Peoria. Again, what kind of a partnership are you getting into? Any questions on the website? If not, then the balance of the presentation is going to uh, talk a lot about real estate, uh, but we're going to start with some business location. We're going to talk a little bit about workforce, um, and then we're going to zero in on the two city uh, properties uh, that, I, that I referenced. So why Peoria? Okay, so we talked about why we think we have a smart approach to investment. But, but everybody has choices. There's many choices. Why should your investment, energy, resources, and financing come to Peoria? Well, I think for a couple of reasons. One, as I mentioned, we have city-owned properties in key micro markets. When you look at the P83 district, it is a coveted market. Uh, we've received a lot of interest leading up to today's event uh, from developers who see what we see, and that is a thriving uh, mixed-use entertainment area that has all of the restaurant, retail, entertainment, housing, and a walkable, uh, easy-to-use environment. That's what the technology users want. That's what the tech talent wants to be in. We have an amazing demographic on Bell Road. We have Loop 101 accessibility. This is a premier property uh, in a key micro-market. But we have another one. Uh, I mentioned it, the 14 acres off Peoria Avenue in, in Loop 101. Again, great Loop 101 visibility, access, um, and, and proximity to, to major retail and entertainment uh, venues. The city of Peoria, we're experienced in public-private partnerships. We've done this before. Um, I mentioned a couple, Trine University. We have an agreement with them. Huntington University, we have an agreement with them. Aviage, Maxwell Technologies, BioSL. Okay, guess what all of those have in common? They're all startups. How many cities embrace startups? Not many, right? That's a little scary, right? We get it. We understand how to work with, how to structure, and how to walk alongside companies of any size. Startup, mid, mature, okay? Not, not a lot of cities do that. And that's to the, to the kudos to the city council uh, to be willing to do that. Because we know that we are starting our innovation economy and now we want to expand it. And I think we started with a pretty good foundation. So we understand legally how to structure for that. We have the policy guidance as to how to invest in those types of opportunities. And we understand that when it comes to the partnership, we have to work alongside you and them to solve problems because problems will always be there. But as partners, we'll work towards a path to the future. I mentioned our EDIS. Um, again, we don't do economic development by the flavor of the month. We have a strategic plan. We know where we want to be, and we have a plan of action to get there. Okay, this plan, we're in the second iteration of it, um, and, and so the, the council's committed to it, uh, as the mayor mentioned, and, and we're committed. That's my work plan, is implementing the EDIS. We have available funding to support ED initiatives. Not every city can say that. We have dedicated revenue streams that are available for eligible projects that provide the right public benefit uh, to invest. And every, every agreement that I just mentioned, we've invested in. And we have key investment opportunities. Again, real estate development, biotechnology, business location. 
So let's talk a little bit about business location. I mentioned that we had a uh, cost of doing business study completed. And it compared Peoria to seven Western metro markets. Again, San Diego, Los Angeles, Bay Area, Salt Lake, Denver, Austin, and Dallas. So what, what did that come out to be? And I, I encourage you to take a look at the, the study that's on our website. So when it comes to the low cost of doing business, compared to those, those uh, Western metro areas, Peoria came in number two. Low cost of living, Peoria is number one. Low cost of labor for tech companies, number three. Median single family house price, number two. Tech company lease costs, number two. Average apartment rent, number one. Okay, so, so what is this telling us? Well, Chris mentioned that Greater Phoenix is the scale-up market. If you're a, a small to mid and you're paying 10 times the amount in rent in a Bay Area where you don't need to be because you could find the workforce here, why would you do that? Why pay $40 a square foot for equivalent product in other uh, uh, Phoenix metro markets when we've performed our project, and we're going to talk about this a little later on, we can deliver that space for $27 a square foot. Why have your, why have your uh, employees uh, pay exorbitant housing and cost of living expenses in these other markets when they can come here and enjoy a very low cost of living, high quality of life, access to workforce with the amenities on the ground to scale up, start, and expand your business here? That's what this is telling me right here, is that we compete very well when you look at those other seven major uh, metro markets for that niche, the scale up, move up uh, company expansion market, where you don't need to be in a tier one and paying the tier one prices, but still be on an hour, hour and a half flight to those tier one markets if you need to be there. I think that's the play we have here. So we show pretty well when it comes to the business location advantage. And again, that's not my opinion. That's what Elliot Pollack said in their evaluation in the cost of doing business study. What else came out of that study? Well, when you look at Peoria industrial lease rates, 12% lower than the average for the six competitive metro areas. Peoria office lease costs, 6% lower than the average leasing cost in six competitive metro areas. School districts. That's really important. You know, if you're going to relocate staff because a business is moving to Peoria, you want, you want your, your employees to know that they're coming into a top-notch school district. PUSD, Peoria Unified School District, among the highest graduation rates and lowest dropout rates in the Valley. If you go to the cost of doing business study, there's four more areas where PUSD is highly ranked and, and off the charts. High quality schools, lowest crime rate in the West Valley, low cost for occupancy of space, educated, talented workforce, low cost of living, at all points in one direction. And that is, this is a viable market for exactly what it is we're trying to accomplish. Workforce. Everybody likes to talk about workforce. As Chris mentioned, workforce is vastly important. That's, that's easily the number one, if not number two thing that every, every business wants to know. How am I going to get my employees? Where are they going to come from? And so, you know, we, we know through demographic data some information. We know through uh, employer surveys, we know other information about the quality of the workforce here. But we wanted to take it to another step and say, okay, in the West Valley, including Peoria and its 30 and 45 minute commute sheds, how do we know by industry type where this workforce is? And so what we did is we looked at trip reduction survey data large sample size from companies that have 50 or more employees. And of the sample size looked at from chip reduction surveys information, for advanced industries, 67% of those surveyed live in the West Valley and work in the East Valley. For business services, 68% live in the West Valley and work in the East Valley. For uh, finance, insurance, and real estate, 84% live in the West Valley and work in the East Valley. Healthcare, 52% of those surveyed live in the West Valley, work in the East Valley. High tech manufacturing, of those surveyed, 94% live in the West Valley and work in the East Valley. It's here. 
And everybody that's on the 10 in the morning going east knows this. Okay? But again, where's the data? This is about data. This is data. This shows, along with all the other data points, we have the workforce to attract the very companies that are locating elsewhere that should and could be here to take advantage of all the opportunities we just talked about from a business locational perspective. The workforce is here. The greatest cost for tech firms, and this comes out of CBRE's Tech Talent Report, but we all know it intuitively, it's, it's labor and, and, and space costs. Well, Peoria has the advantage on labor costs. Peoria has the advantage on office lease rates, existing, and when you look at the due diligence package we put together with our land development consulting team for the Class A office project we're going to talk about later, again, delivering Class A office space for $27 a square foot, in market getting $40 a square foot elsewhere. Why go there? You can pay $13 a square foot less here, have the workforce, the quality of life, the low cost of doing business. Makes sense to me. Peoria advantage on cost of living and doing business. Not what I think, it's what the studies show. It can happen here, it should happen here. Commercial office development advantage. Again, why Peoria? Well, as I mentioned, we have key micro markets. The Arrowhead micro market within the larger uh, uh, Western uh, Phoenix submarket is a, a key micro market for, for all the reasons that, that exist on the ground today. You just have to drive up Bell Road and, uh, and understand that. You know, this is the intersection of Maine and Maine, right here, in this P83 district, for the, the size of vacant land opportunity that exists. Loop 101 adjacent, uh, a real opportunity, I believe, for, for a real niche Class A office potential in P83. Okay, so what's so special about P83? We talked about tech talent a little bit. What do they want? They want to be able to walk to restaurants. They want to be able to walk to entertainment. They want to be able to walk to housing. I want to get on a bike. I want to go on a trail. I want to jog, I want to walk. I don't want to get in a car. I don't want to sit in traffic. Well, that's all here. We have existing three multifamily housing complexes. Skunk Creek Trail, which is a regional trail system right on the southern boundary of P83 District. Okay, we have all the restaurants. We have all the retail. It's all here. What the tech talent pool wants is here. What do the tech users want? The tech talent pool. So it makes perfect sense to be here. Live, work, play, all within P83 and adjacent areas. You can literally ride your bike from your apartment complex or your uh, business here in our new Innovation and Technology Center and ride your bike on Skunk Creek Trail to Rio Vista and work out. You never have to get in a car unless you want to. That's Advantage Peoria. Okay, well that all sounds good. But what are the real development drivers here? How do we know that there's pipeline? Right, because if we're gonna build a Class A office development, how do we know, what gives a certainty or a good feeling that there's going to be a pipeline of tenants that would wanna come here? All right, so according to CBRE, if Peoria captures just 20% of the large tenant rollover and the Northwest Phoenix submarket, it should lease approximately 80,000 80, square feet per year for each year, 2017 to 19. That's 240,000 square feet. If we can just capture 20%. Peoria is a great location for advanced industries for all the things we talked about. Workforce, low cost of living, low cost of business, our school, lifestyle, opportunity to grow. I think we can get 20% for all those reasons. Okay, so let's talk a little about real estate development. So far we've talked about business locational advantage. We've talked about workforce, all really important from the business attraction perspective. Okay, well now we've got to connect the dots. That's great. We got some businesses that'll sign leases, right? Now we've got to talk, well, how are we going to get this stuff built? Speed to market, important. Plan review, permitting inspection, front of the line, no cost to you. We understand speed to market. When we talk about the two properties, the 17 acres right here in P83, the 14 acres, we've already done the vast majority of pre-development work 
through our relationship with a land development consulting team that we hired to do the due diligence packages that are available on our website. In fact, we have hard copies of them in the back of the room. So we've already done the market analysis, CBRE has. We've already done the, the, the site planning. We've already done the, the financial modeling. Uh, we've already done the pro forma construction work. We know the return on investment metrics, the cash flow, based on our conception of the project going forward. So speed to market, I think that helps, right? It's all about how long is this going to take me to get from idea to shovel, right? So if we've already spoken about the, 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 the permitting and, and, and plan review process, well, you have a motivated landowner. That's why we're here, city of Peoria. We're market and performa driven approach. Okay, that's very important to us. Again, what, Peoria smart investing, what does that mean? Well, we're not gonna just show you a bunch of pretty pictures. Okay, we're gonna show you the, the, the facts and the due diligence, the analysis behind it. Okay, and that's all on a market evaluation and pro, performa driven approach. And that's what the, the, the real meat of our due diligence package is based on. And what the designs of the buildings reflect. Development potential, again, advantage Peoria. From a market evaluation, from a pro forma, from an entitlement, we've already gone through all this. All this pre-development work's already been done for our two sites. Now, we're not saying that this is the only execution. That's why we're embracing the private sector to say, hey, have you got better ideas, better executions? Hey, we'd love to see it. But we wanted to take a lot of the brain damage and time and cost out of that equation for you so you have a great foundation from which to build. Because we've already done the entitlement analysis. We've already done the opportunity uh, and constraints analysis. We've already done the market evaluation. We've already done the design concepts and the, the tenant mix. All of that work's already been done. And thanks to our land development consulting team. You know, it was really important that the city hire experienced experts in the field to, to give us that guidance. So CBRE, Heinz, uh, DPS, uh, the land development team, they brought the expertise to the table. Um, and, and so I, I want to recognize them and, 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 and say thank you. There's Chris Anderson of, of Heinz back there and Ashley Brooks of CBRE. Thank, thank you guys for, for all your hard work. Because I told him, I said, this package has to look like what the private sector would submit to their credit committees. Because we have to talk and walk and look like the private sector in this engagement. And so they, they were the ones that, that, that made that happen. Again, Peoria Smart. It's not pretty pictures. It's about what will really pencil. Development drivers still. OK, so we talked about compelling sites. And that all sounds good. But what's real today? OK, so what we've been talking about is pipeline, large tenant rollovers, you know, price per square foot, markets, all that stuff. But what's real today? How do I know today that the Arrowhead micro market is a good investment uh, choice? Well, let's look at that. One of the other technical studies that we talked about we had done was a commercial office market study. Uh, and so this information, and there's a whole lot more in the study on the website, but just to give you a flavor, comes from that study. Office vacancy rate overall for Peoria is four and a half times lower than the countywide average. Class A office vacancy in Peoria is zero. We have none. Zero Class A office. We lose every tenant that requires Class A office because we have no product. We can't have that anymore. Rent, okay, rent. That's the bottom line. Who's paying what? Okay, so according to the study, Peoria office rents in P83 are three to five dollars more per square foot due to location. We have some people paying class A office rents for class B office space. Why would you do that? Because this is where they want to be. Location, location, location. The P83 office inventory has the lowest vacancy and highest rents in Peoria. That's today. Technology and innovation center. So everything we've talked about so far kind of leads us to, OK, what's this execution? What do we think makes sense for uh, our innovation and technology center? And so um, as I mentioned, we 
put together a whole due diligence package and we looked at a whole number of things. So I really encourage you to take a look at the due diligence package. It's really going to help you out. But, and we're not saying that this is what it has to be, but this is what we believe the delivery needs to include. Because if we do not have delivered Class A office, we won't be able to attract the type of users that we're looking for. So if you have a different conception that's more mixed use and has other uses associated with it, as long as we're including the major asset delivery that ties right back to the EDIS that says, guess what, you got to have this product or else you're not going to attract the companies that you want, then hey, we're open to it. But what we envision here is a six-story office development here, finish, iconic, something that just says innovation and technology has arrived in Peoria. So this has to be a quality execution in terms of design, in terms of height, in terms of everything that you look for in, in having a signature building. That, of course, is balanced with market reality and, and performance, and that's why we went through the exercise that we did. So we, we feel we've reached that e equilibrium for this execution. Now, there's some extraordinary site development costs here. All right? One of the things that you'll read in the due diligence package in terms of the, uh, the uh, site opportunity and constraints analysis is we cannot consume parking spaces that we are not replacing. See? So at the end of the day, if you're going to put close to a 200,000 square foot uh, six-story uh, Class A office building here, you're going to need par structured parking. Okay, and that's usually the budget buster, right? Well, that's where the city comes in. You know, we're, we understand that we have to have skin in the game. And our skin in the game for this execution, as identified in the due diligence package, can include the city constructing, financing, owning this parking structure on our dedicated revenue source. Okay, so that's off the pro forma for you, the private developer. Okay. There are also some um, other capital improvements uh, that are needed to, again, deliver the, the, the product in the most efficient, market-balanced way. Um, and it's outlined in the due diligence package. But we can deliver this, we believe, with the revenue streams that we've identified on the, pro on the public side and through the uh, return on investment that you will get um, looking at the return on investment metrics that are included in our due diligence package. So we feel that this is a viable execution. Uh, you'll notice it might be a little hard to see here, but this is identified as a phase two execution. Um, it was envisioned that if at, at a phase two, or if, if you can wrap it all into phase one, hey, that's great too, as to have that other mix of uses, whether it's other uh, retail, other restaurant, other entertainment, to kind of go along with that. Uh, typically, they want to have 83rd Avenue frontage um, and so we saw that as a potential phase two, uh, this being a phase one. But again, if it could all be delivered in one singular phase, that's great too. So what are we looking at here? So we're looking at about a total of about 177,000 square feet gross. Um, how the team looked at this delivery is based on what does the tenant require? So parking is five to one. Why is it five to one? Well, because CBRE is saying that if you want to attract this type of a tenant, they're going to require five to one. Okay? When you take into account the other parking fields that remain and cross parking access, you're, you're parked at 10 to one. Okay? Five to one dedicated to the project, 10 to one overall. Okay? We know tech, tech tenants like parking. So that's very important. Uh, we also included close proximity of the parking structure to the building with a, with a uh, pedestrian bridge because, again, it's about convenience. It's about making the labor pool for those types of tenants um, most comfortable. So we've, we've included some, some of, of those nuances. So in the final analysis, what we're, we're looking in terms of efficiency is um, net square footage of about 160,000 square feet, and we're, we're plus 277 spaces after we replace that which we consume. So 
that's really important and the opportunity constraints section of the due diligence package goes into some discussion about some of the because of the things you need to be aware of as you look at this parcel for development. But we think that this could be a nice start to the thought process as to how do we deliver this class A technology and innovation asset to the community to go in line with our robust business attraction efforts. Any questions on this? Any questions on how we've approached anything? Uh, no? Okay. So the other city property that I mentioned uh, is a 14 acre parcel, uh, Loop 101 and Peoria Avenue. Now that's a different office opportunity. Uh, what, what we anticipate for the, the office opportunity in P83 are more your technology, innovation, advanced business service type of clientele, maybe uh, you know, regional headquarters uh, and, and those sorts of users. Um, those that would normally uh, align more with Class A office product, uh, that's, that's the execution we believe for, for the P83 district. Now for this parcel, uh, slightly different execution uh, because we think slightly different user base. So what we have here is approximately uh, 140,000 square feet of office potential. Um, this is more class B plus, uh, not, not true class A. Uh, and that's again just because of the amenity base that's here in P83 that's not there. So the user base that we anticipate here is, is more of your business services, maybe some advanced business services, maybe healthcare. Um, so it's a different execution for a different part property. Um, there is a vacant piece on the corner um, that is in the market. Uh, if, if additional land assembly is necessary or desirable, that's, that's something that's on the table. Um, so again, uh, you know, this, is, this is parked based on what the end users anticipated require. So again, delivery of the space that the users want. Not trying to squeeze a user into the space that you have. That's the paradigm shift we're trying to go towards. So again, city owns, uh, due diligence package separate on this one. Um, again, does not have to be exactly this execution. In the due diligence package, we have floor plans, we have elevations, we have you know, a lot of the uh, stuff you're gonna need to look at and say, okay, how did you arrive at this, the performance, cash flows, all that stuff. Um, so you know, feel free to be creative. We included a retail pad um, out on Peoria. Again, having some, you know, whether it's restaurant uh, or, or something to serve the lunchtime needs of the employees, some, that's helpful. Um, if you have a better idea on how to execute it, great. Um, feel free to get creative. But again, what we're looking for is some significant space of this uh, caliber. Um, to add to our inventory separate and apart from what we're looking to add here in, in P83. So before I get to next steps, questions? Yes, sir. I know it's in the due diligence package. I due diligence package, but what rents are you projecting, performing for the two projects? Um, if I remember correctly, the uh, pro forma rents for the Class A office um, are $27 a square foot. And for, if I remember correctly, floors four, five, and six, I think they popped to 28. For this one, I'd have to go back and refresh my memory. I, I, I don't recall off the top of my head. But we have the due diligence packages on that table right back there. Um, and so I'll be happy to show them to you at the break. Was there another question? No, you were just saying that the rent is full service. That's a full service gross rate. Full service gross. Questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, just a question on the front row, like being in the front of the line for review. What staffing do you have in place that wouldn't affect the existing projects that are in Peoria for review times? Well, uh, that's, 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 always, that's always the challenge, right? 
Um, I think the way we've approached it in the past, and I think council would probably, and, and city management would, would definitely look at, do we need to provide additional um, staff resources to meet the needs? So it's, it's always the balance of not wanting to hire FTEs when there's a lull, uh, or you're on the downward slope of that volume. Um, but if we're seeing that all of this activity is coming in and we need to look at additional resources, and we've done that in the past when warranted, then in the past we've done that. And so at that time, my, uh, my, my thought would be that we would look at that and say, okay, uh, do we need to bring on additional staff resources uh, to meet the need? Okay, great. Well, okay, so what do we do next? Okay, so the most important execution right now from a time perspective is the Technology and Innovation Center. Why? I already have two businesses that want to go into it, and we haven't even gotten past this. I don't want to lose that opportunity. Um, and um, so here's what we would love for it to be, understanding that things change. For the P83 site, and this is really the next steps just for the P83 site. I'll get to the other ones in a second. We're looking for April 28th to be the delivery of proposals from those that are interested as to what that execution is. So I'm gonna go over in just two slides from now, what should that proposal contain? So we'll, we'll touch on that. Why April 28th? Because in May, for those proposals received, me and my staff and our land development consulting team, we need to start vetting them. And where are we gonna start? We're gonna start with the pro forma and the market analysis. So, you know, just know that's where we're gonna go first. Um, and so that's gonna give us some time to review, comment, questions back and forth. Um, what we would like to do as a target have uh, a pin in the calendar for June for council consideration of an exclusive negotiating agreement. If we can get through the process of identifying, okay, what is the most advantageous execution for the city, given the proposer's qualifications, experience, all the things we're gonna touch on in a second. Why that's important is that through the summer months then, once we have an ENA in place, we can start hashing deal points. So then in fall, we have a target execution of a development agreement. Since we can't have any construction activity going on during spring training, we would love to be in a position, this is very aggressive, I understand, might not roll this way, we'd love to be in a position to start construction in April of 17. Again, why so fast? Because those two tenants I told you about, their leases expire um, in Q1, Q2 of 18. Uh, so that's what we're trying to do. You know, hey, if, it, if we can get there, great. You know, we know that, that this might not be the way reality unfolds, but that's what we're shooting for. Again, just for the P83 site. Now, for the 14-acre site, what we're looking at is a June proposal delivery. All right, so that way we can kind of get all the, the P83 sites through and then we can start reviewing and accepting the 14-acre um, uh, site proposals. Summer, EDS, and our land development consulting team reviewing and vetting proposals. Fall is the target for an exclusive negotiating agreement. Um, and then Q1 of 17 for target for your DA. Now, for those private sites that are part of our inventory that I mentioned, of which there's 22 on our website, um, you know, we can accept development proposals on an ongoing rolling basis. So that's how we're looking to kind of manage this. Uh, so what should these proposals include? All right, so your firm qualifications and experience for delivering the or mix of assets that you're suggesting for your proposal. Your portfolio of similar projects completed. Personnel to be assigned to the project with resumes. Development team for the project. Who's your development team? Your leasing team personnel with, the, with resumes. And that's, that's obviously really important because we are trying to attract a certain tenant base. So what experience does your leasing team have in attracting those tenant bases? 
So I mean, if it's a leasing team that has huge expertise in retail, well, that's probably not going to help us a whole lot when we're trying to attract tech tenants. Uh, so that'll be very interesting for us to understand. The development team's experience in attracting the desired tech tenants. Do you have existing relationships? Is there ability to expand from what you have into here? Um, are there other market uh, draws that you have that because of your relationships and network we can uh, call upon? What's the development program for the site with the market evaluation? Okay, so we've given you our best uh, effort in terms of what we believe the market is. If you come up with something different, what market metrics are you going on? So a development program for the site with market evaluation, a preliminary site plan and construction pro forma. Now, you might say, wow, that's a lot of stuff by the end of April. But we've done a lot of the heavy lifting already in our due diligence packages. Uh, now, granted, you might need to tweak it. You might have a different thought on the ex uh, execution. You might want to add some additional stuff. Um, but a lot of the baseline is already there. Um, so that's what we're shooting for. Again, understand, it doesn't always work out the way you hope. But what's really driving the bus on this is those two tenants, their leases are expiring, and I don't want to lose them. Uh, so that's, that's what the proposal should include. Questions? Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, I'll probably be able to discuss that more with the, uh, the firm I'm going to be entering into the exclusive negotiating agreement with. Thoughts? Does this make sense? Yes, sir. Uh, I think we have, we have the mic coming up so the audience can hear the question. Paul, right here, the gentleman. Do you have a uh, performer <coughs> that uh, would show us a five-year plan? I understand what we'd have to do as the developers and the partnership, but do you have you gone out for five years to show us the uh, commitment and the fact that you can uh, attest to the fact that this will last for at least five years? Projects that you're talking about in the future take a longer period of time. So have you got a projection of what you want to accomplish in that five-year period and how you balance it? Okay, so is the question of the five-year projection on funding city a bit? finance. City finance of the, of the publicly financed improvements? Yes. Okay, yeah. So um, great question. So the question is for those improvements that are publicly financed associated with... Um, Let's take this execution, for example. Okay, so what are we talking about as being on the public side of the, of the ledger? Well, it's the four-level uh, parking structure. There's a sewer relocation that is needed. That's about $470,000. This parking structure, ballpark, $16 million. And then delivering a fully improved pad, uh, about $2.1 million. Okay, so we have already, um, in uh, the budgeting process, set aside a revenue stream that would be sufficient to debt service a 20-year um, MDA bond. And that's how the city would finance the public improvements that it's, that's on its side of the ledger. I wasn't really talking particularly about one project. I'm talking about our company or companies that are here being in business with you long term. And the fact is, how would it look to have you made a projection of your finances and what you need so that we would know that there's a continuity for five or ten years at least? Um, no, we, we haven't gone to that granular level. I mean, uh, what, what CBRE did was a, a, a projection on, on uh, Class A office pipeline based on Peoria capturing 20% of the large tenant rollovers that um, are occurring in the Northwest uh, Valley submarket. So assuming a 20% capture of that pipeline. So that. That's, that equals, over three years, 240,000 square feet. Okay. <clears throat> You're again talking about the tr particular project. I'm talking about being in business with, your f with the company and with you for the future on major projects. And have you made a projection for some firm uh, that is going into business with you on a long-term basis, that it's uh, viable for who, 
whatever the council is and whatever you're doing. So you get into business with you, and is there continuity assured? Um, no, I don't, no, I mean, I, if I understand your question correctly, I mean, that, that, who we go into business with on a partnership level, I mean, that is to be vetted out. First, we gotta get the proposals, understand the execution, what are the types of tenants you're looking to bring, how are you going to bring them, because it's gonna be the private developer that brings the tenants, in partnership with the city. Mm -hmm. yeah, so we're gonna be looking for the private sector to tell us that. What we have are some projections on what we believe the market will be able to absorb, but we, we, we haven't laid out a, a specific engagement plan for, for specific businesses. You have those projections. We have projections, I, I'm sorry, I'm not understanding the question. So, <clears throat> they'd be available. You've done some work as to where you'd be in five years. Where we believe we'll be in five years, but it's not going to be to a granular level. Mm -hmm. We have some rough estimates, okay. but yeah. nothing that is granular enough. All right. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Other questions? Yes, sir. Thank you. On your um, two development sites, within your pro forma, do you have some expectations on what you're looking for in terms of the land cost or land value? Or is that just an, uh, a negotiation at this point? Right. So for, the, um, for this site here, what we're looking at is out of the 17 acres, approximately two to three acres are actually needed for delivery of the asset in this construct. Um, backing out uh, the, the parking garage. So the land is owned by the city. Um, there would be, uh, including the fully improved building pad, it would be um, a fair market rent. Um, and uh, the tax structure uh, under a GPLET, we're looking at the lesser of ad valorem or excise. But the city would retain ownership of the land. Oh, so it's a ground lease. It's a ground lease. And it'd be amortized over a ground lease based on fair market. That would, that would be the case as well for the 14 acres. It's a ground lease uh, amortized cost. Thank you. Any other questions? Any oh, we're, I, I mean, there's, there's, always, there's always... Any opportunity to purchase or is that off the table? Um, I, think, I think it's negotiable. I mean, in a past deal, we included in the ground lease an option at a future date to purchase at the then appraised value. So I think depending on the project, depending on the execution, that's something that we can look at. Out of the gate, we're, we're, we're preferring a ground lease straight out, but I think we can look at that depending on the project. Why is that preference? Because that's, that's a, it's a control factor. Since this is our sports complex. But like I said, everything is negotiable, right? Any other questions? If not, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. Um, let me turn it back over to Glenn. Uh, we have a great lunch for you. Um, the game will be starting shortly. Uh, what we have in the back um, are some boards. Uh, we have some poster boards showing the two sites that I mentioned, as well as the partnership sites that I mentioned. So that's the Vistancia Commercial Corps. And uh, we have Mark Hammonds. Mark Hammonds, wave is right here. He is uh, representing Stratford Land, landowner of the Vistancia Commercial Corps. So he and his team will be available to answer questions for that uh, site. And then David Katz of Howard Hughes Corporation is here uh, to talk about uh, the opportunity of that 17-acre site uh, off Northern and the 101. We have uh, a poster board also for our, the Roe v, uh, what we refer to as the Roe v Future Industrial Development Site, um, about 128 acres that we are working with the Roe v family to turn into an industrial park. Uh, so we'll have some staff available to talk about that. Um, so feel free to uh, mingle, uh, look at our boards after Glenn breaks us down, and then we'll have lunch and uh, enjoy a game. So with that, I thank you very much. Yep.
Thank you very much, Scott. I think one of the things that I wanted to point out about this is this is one of the first cities I've seen take an extraordinarily hard look at how to present to the capital markets in the private sector. And from a P3 point of view, that is phenomenal. And from a Canadian point of view, I'll tell you, as someone who is uh, representing 350 Canadian companies, a lot of investors, this is the kind of stuff they're looking for. They're looking for the packaged goods, the sell side material ready to go, and they are, they are out there doing that. I can tell you, as, uh, as chairman of F4 Water, we have hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars committed to the West Valley. And we are really, really happy when we see a city like this doing as good a job as Scott just presented for the capital markets to come out and take a look at things that are going on. Lunch will be served in about 15 minutes. They're just gearing it up in the back. The game will start at 12.05. Um, I think that is everything uh, that we're ready to talk about today, Scott. Thank you very, very much. And thank you for your team for putting this much effort into doing it the really the right way and setting the tone in the bar. Thank you very much. We're adjourned.